Without question, ours is a rapidly changing culture, especially when it comes to people's religious beliefs. Uh, and even today, uh, with only about one to three percent of the population, according to the polls, uh, acknowledging themselves as atheists or those who don't believe in God, or and if you include agnostics, uh, those who question whether God is real, the numbers go up to nine to eleven uh, percent. Even with those small numbers, this is a group that's having a significant impact as far as the information uh, they're putting out. Uh, who would have thought 20 or 30 years ago that some of the best sellers uh, that were being produced uh, today would be written by atheists about uh, their views that God is not real or God doesn't exist. Who have written such books as Letter to a Christian Nation or The God Delusion uh, or That God is Not Great. Uh, yes, people are buying these books and some are buying into the thought process that's behind them. These are the kind of messages that are invading our culture today in books, publications, media, advertising. So we thought we'd sit down with a couple of experts and get their view on this. Uh, we interviewed uh, Tommy Doremus, an account executive with Means Advertising, to get his view on what's going on in the advertising world. And then we sat down with Eric Johnson, director of the Southeast Law Institute, to see exactly what the legal rights are of those who are doing this kind of advertising. A private advertiser has a right to accept or reject your ads. Normally, private uh, uh, placements, uh, the people want those because it's revenue. On the other hand, if it's like a city bus or if it's something that's owned by a government entity, then they have to permit your advertising. They cannot turn you down because that is, in effect, a public forum that they've created. The most common one are city buses. The best example are in the D.C. metro system in, in Washington, D.C., where the atheists wanted to run ads about if they're not being a god to be good just for goodness sake. That was, I think, uh, they were bootstrapping on ads that had been run in London. They tried it in, in D.C. Uh, the D.C. buses ran the ad. There was an objection from a family group in Maryland who said, well, you know, that's bad. You can't run that. And, and the D.C. Metro Authority said, we don't have a choice. But on the billboards, the private companies can reject the ads. There was one in uh, Birmingham where the ad was uh, wanted to be run by atheists. And it was similar to the bus ads in D.C. And the, um, the billboard company said, no, we're not going to run that ad. Unfortunately, another company decided they would run it anyway. I became aware of a situation uh, from a company that we do a lot of business with, the local billboard company here in Birmingham about them turning down some advertising from a, uh, an organization called the Freedom From Religion Foundation uh, that wanted to do an educational campaign uh, in our area. This organization actually sent him a check, a prepaid check for the display time and the actual vinyl that would be hung on the billboard structure. So from his perspective, as a manager at this billboard company, it was the easiest sale that he would make probably for the whole year. He looked at it and said, there's really no second guessing on this decision. He said, from an economic standpoint, sure, I could justify taking the money, but from a sense of his own Christian faith and a sense of what's good or bad for our community and the standards of our community, he just didn't feel like it was the right thing to do, and so he stood by his decision. Before the person comes with an ad, I'm sure that they'll work with some ad agency or some graphic designer to get the ad prepared the way they want it to be. And so maybe they make the initial de uh, decision about how the ad will appear and what it will say. And, and they may want to put some constraints on themselves. And surely they thought through how it's going to affect people and what message they want to convey. But the real decision comes by the private company that owns the billboard. They own it. It's their business. They make a profit from it. They're members of the community. And so in this community, they will not show things that are as, as graphic or as repulsive as you might have in other places. I think it was in Times Square, uh, one company, and I won't call the name because I don't remember the name of the company, but they had a very sexually suggestive ad. And they got so much criticism that they took it down. It didn't stay up very long. Because even in New York City, people were offended. And so community values ultimately are the thing that determines you know, what is going to be on the billboard. Ultimately, they were able to get their sign posted. There was another billboard company. They weren't able to get the location that they wanted right in the middle of downtown Birmingham. They're on the outskirts of town. But once they were able to get that posted, 
it became a story in the news media. TV stations picked up on it, the newspaper picked up on it, and they were very quick to point out that this company, Lamar Advertising, had denied them the, their right to express their freedom of speech, had censored their advertisements, and had treated them unfairly. What was interesting, though, is once the message got out, once the sign got posted, this organization received a lot of negative phone calls from people in the area who really did not like the fact that that sign had been put up. And while there are people in our community and in our area that would brand themselves as atheists or say that they are agnostic, you know, it doesn't seem like they're open to accepting criticism themselves. When the billboard company in Birmingham, the first one, decided not to run the billboard ad that the atheists wanted to run, the atheists, I understand, threatened to sue them, said they'd been discriminated against. No discrimination existed because it was a private entity that they were talking to. Now, if they had already entered into a contract of some sort, and then you get into a contract issue, it's purely legal about what someone agreed to do or not agreed to do. If you don't have that issue, then it's, a, it's, it's an offer that the person came in and said, I want you to run this ad. The billboard company looks at it and says, no, we don't want to run it. In other words, they don't enter into a contract with them. Pure contract law, there's no federal law. There's no First Amendment right there, no freedom of speech right or anything. So that atheist group does not have a right or that was violated, so they're not discriminated against. There was no contractual obligation that existed. So there's, they just go away and try to find someone else to run the ad, which in this case they did. And I know that I, for one, appreciate the stand this particular individual took to say, this message is not appropriate in our community and we're not going to take it. People need to be involved in their community so that billboard companies like this private company will feel good about not running things that are offensive. So if people are involved, then uh, private business owners are going to want to try to please them. If a business owner does decide to go ahead and do something, or if it's a bus company that has to do it because it's a city, then you may be more proactive by you know, buying an ad that counters it. You be involved. I think we can be encouraged by the stand that this gentleman at Lamar has taken in this particular case. Because while it's easy for us to get caught up in the economics and how much commission can we make if we take this business or how much can we make if we accept this particular type of advertising, we can say from a community standpoint that we don't feel like it's appropriate. And we can also say from a faith standpoint we believe that there's better avenues for us to take to generate revenue for our businesses. You know, in the old days, people would go out in the public square. If you go in a lot of old Alabama towns, they're built around a square. They're still that way. That's where people would come on Fourth of July and during political times, and they'd have stump speeches. We don't do too much of that now because of television and so forth. But that square, that public square, is what we refer to as the, the public community of ideas and expression. And we all to get out there and express ourselves in it and be sure that we are influencing that public square for the right thing. And if we do that through organizations and supporting organizations that are doing that, then, then that helps you know, get the right message in the public square. Yes, there are people that believe differently than we as Christians believe, but we have uh, a real firm foundation for why we believe what we believe, and we can show that uh, through the scriptures, through our faith, uh, to our family and to our friends and, um, and help them to understand that just because somebody else puts a message up there doesn't mean it's true. So as you've heard, this is not a, a cut and dried issue and it's certainly one that those who believe in God need to be involved in. Tommy and Eric gave us some great ideas. Now we need to implement them. I'm Bob Waldrop for the Crosswinds Foundation.